In this tutorial, we will learn how to write an inline assembly program to find the length of a given string. Before we jump into the inline assembly portion of the tutorial, let me show you how to do this in a regular C++ program. You typically include the C string header file which makes available to the program all the string functions. You then use the string length function and pass to it as the parameter the desired string. The string length function will then compute the length of the of the string which is passed as a parameter and then it returns the length of the string. So this program just displays the value of the length which is computed via string length and it exits. So building the program and running it we see that the length of the string is 16. Now how do we go about doing this with the x86 assembly? So the algorithm that we are going to use to find the string length is as follows. We first save the starting address of the string which is the address of the address of the first byte of the string. We then find the address of the terminating null byte which is the address of the last byte. We then subtract the address of the last byte and the address of the first byte and that gives us the length of the string. The x86 instruction that we are going to use for this purpose is the scan string instruction. The scan string instruction comes in different flavors. It's got the byte version which is scas b, the word, the d word and the quad word version. For this example we will be using the byte version of scan string. I'm going to quickly bring up the scan string specification page here from the Intel manual and you can see here that for scan string byte version the byte of interest will be passed to the AL register which is the lower 8 bits of the RAX register and the instruction will compare the byte in AL with the byte of the memory location in EDI or RDI and then based on the results of the comparison it will set the status flags. So what we are going to do here in the program is to first load the starting address of the string into the RBX register. I, I choose RBX, it can be any general purpose register of your choice. So as a first step to modify our original C++ program, we can go ahead and remove the C string, the header file and the call to string length. So once we've done that, we first load the starting address of the variable my, my str. So my str contains the string and the starting address of my str is saved into a general purpose register. And in this case I'm choosing the rbx register and as you can see the instruction that I'm using here is lea which stands for load effective address and the destination is the rbx register. The source is represented here as percentage zero. Typically the percentage followed by a number is the uh, is the number that shows up in the constraint list. So for example percentage zero in this case would mean the first item that shows up in the constraint list and as you can see in the constraint list the first item is the is our my str variable and the m here represents that it's a memory location. So the memory address of my str is now saved into rbx. Now in the next step would be to use the scan string instruction to locate where the null byte is. The scan string instruction will r return in rdi the value of the last null byte. So we use 
the CLD instruction which is the clear direction flag instruction uh, before the scan string instruction to specify that we want our scan string instruction to proceed in the forward direction and not in the backward direction so for the scan string instruction as I mentioned before we are going to use the repeat not equal prefix which means that the scan string instruction is going to be executed until the equal flag which is the zero flag in the E flags register is set and the arguments to the scan string instruction are as follows the first argument here is the uppercase D which denotes the RDI register and as you can see the RDI register is mapped to the starting address of our string and the A here refers to the RAX register and as you can see the RAX register is mapped to a variable AL in our program and the AL in our program is just set to 0 which happens to be the ASCII value for the null byte so at this point when the CPU executes this instruction the value after it is done successfully executing the scan string instruction the value in the RDI register is going to be one more than the null byte so we first decrement the value in RDI to get the address of the final null byte so once we get the address of the null byte we then subtract the value in RDI and the value in RBX remember the value in RBX is the starting address of our string so when we subtract the address of the null byte and the address of the starting ad, uh, the starting address of our string we get the string length and the equal to D in inline assembly specifies that the we want the output to be returned to the D register which is the same as the D that we used here it denotes the RDI register so the result is going to be saved in the RDI register which in turn we map to the variable length in our program so once we have computed the string length we just as before we just display the value of the variable length and we exit so compiling and running this program gives us a value of 0 which is clearly wrong and that's because I haven't saved my changes so I save my changes I rebuild and I run it and this time the length of the string is 16 which happens to match what we got by when we use the string length function in our C++ program